This is Rummy's Corner. Rummy's Corner. Good evening, boxing fans, and welcome back. Here are the results from the latest survey, where 25 volunteers provided a list of what they each consider to be the top 25 most spectacular knockouts in filmed boxing history. A very special thanks to all 25 volunteers who participated in this mighty challenging endeavor. I did not personally participate in this survey, which used a similar scoring system from previous surveys, because I did not want my opinions to influence the outcome. Without further ado, let's jump right into the countdown. Number 50 on June 20th, 1975, Carlos Zarate and Orlando Amores squared off in a bantamweight battle. In round three, Zarate landed a quick right immediately followed by a double left hook that dropped Amores hard. It was a third round knockout for Zarate. Number 49. On February 16, 1970, WBA heavyweight champion Jimmy Ellis went up against the NYSAC heavyweight champion Joe Frazier. The vacant WBC belt was also on the line, making this a battle for the undisputed heavyweight crown. In round four, Smokin' Joe landed a smoking left hook that clobbered Ellis. Incredibly, he beat the count, but was unable to continue. And it was a fourth round stoppage for Smokin' Joe Frazier, the new undisputed world heavyweight champion. Number 48. On May 23, 1981, WBC junior middleweight champion Maurice Hope put his title on the line against former two-division champion Wilfred Benitez. In round 12, Benitez smashed Hope with a beautiful right hand that sent the champion down. Hope would not be beating the count. It was a 12th round knockout and Wilfred Benitez had just become a three-division champion. Number 47. On November 13th, 2021, IBF featherweight champion Kid Galahad put his belt on the line against former junior featherweight champion Kiko Martinez. Early in round 6, Martinez drilled Galahad with a sweet right hand that put the champion down, and the fight was over. It was a 6th round stoppage, marking Kiko Martinez as a two-division champion. Number 46. On November 30th, 1979, WBA light heavyweight champion Victor Galindez squared off against former WBC light heavyweight champion Marvin Johnson. Early in round 11, Johnson landed a looping left that sent Galindez down and the referee waved it off. It was an 11th round stoppage for Marvin Johnson. Number 45. On May 15, 1992, Burt Cooper and former light heavyweight champion Michael Moore battled it out in a heavyweight slugfest. Both boxers were dropped multiple times in this wild encounter, but in the end, Moore ended matters with a left hand followed by a right uppercut to win the vacant WBO strap. Number 44. On May 11th, 1981, former heavyweight champion Ken Norton squared off against undefeated contender Gentleman Jerry Cooney. This one was over quickly, as Cooney simply beat Norton down and overwhelmed him to score an impressive first round stoppage victory. Number 43. On July 10th, 1971, world bantamweight champion Ruben Olivares went up against former flyweight champion Efren Torres in a non-title bout scheduled for 10. But this one would not be going 10. In round 4, Olivares landed a snappy left and Torres timbered down into a savage face plant. It was a fourth round stoppage for Olivares. Number 42. On September 25th, 1962, world heavyweight champion Floyd Patterson put his title on the line against top-rated challenger Sonny Liston. A big left, a grazing right, and another monster left sent the champion down in the opening round, and the fight was over. It was a first-round knockout, and Sonny Liston became the new world heavyweight champion.
Number 41. On April 15th, 1985, world middleweight champion Marvelous Marvin Hagler defended his crown against former two-division world champion Tommy the Hitman Hearns. In one of the greatest matches during the long, rich history of professional boxing, Marvelous Marvin Hagler ended matters in round three when he landed a booming right that sent the Hitman timbering down. Marvelous. Simply marvelous. Number 40. On October 19, 1985, IBF cruiserweight champion Leroy Murphy put his title on the line against Chisanda Muti. This one had a wild Rocky II style ending, where in round 12, both boxers simultaneously landed bludgeoning rights. Both boxers went crashing down. The ref began a count on both of them, and Murphy managed to make it to his feet, but Muti didn't. It was a highly dramatic 12th round knockout victory for Leroy Murphy. Number 39. On April 24th, 1931, world lightweight champion Tony Canzanari put his title on the line against the reigning junior welterweight world champion Jack Kid Berg. This was their second bout in a three-fight series. In round three, Canzanari nailed Berg with a left uppercut followed by a mean right that sent Berg down, and the fight was over. Number 38. On October 30th, 1974, undefeated world heavyweight champion Big George Foreman put his championship on the line against former heavyweight champion Muhammad Ali. In round 8, Ali unloaded with a crisp combination that sent Foreman staggering down to the canvas. The fight was over and Muhammad Ali had just become a two-time heavyweight champion of the world. Number 37. On August 2nd, 1980, WBA welterweight champion Pepino Cuevas put his belt on the line against undefeated contender Thomas Hearns. In round two, Hearns rattled Cuevas with a disgusting right hand and quickly followed it up with another one to send the champion down and out. With the victory, Hearns had won his first of many major world titles. Number 34 was actually a three-way tie in the scoring. The first happened on March 28, 1981, when former two-time light heavyweight champion Marvin Johnson faced undefeated contender Michael Spinks. In round four, Spinks launched a menacing left hook that nailed the mark and the fight was over. It was a spectacular left hook delivery from Michael Jinx Spinks. Then on June 27, 1972, world light heavyweight champion Bob Foster defended his crown against undefeated contender Mike Quarry. In a heated fast-paced contest, Foster ended matters with just seconds left in round four when he detonated a nuclear left that leveled Quarry. The fight was over, and that was one hell of a left. Finally, on January 13th, 1954, former world heavyweight champion Ezard Charles went up against Bob Satterfield in a scheduled 10-round contest, but this one would not be going 10 rounds. As the two were exchanging punches in round two, the Cincinnati Cobra struck with a lethal-looking left-right-left that floored Satterfield, and the fight was over. Number 33. On March 15, 1996, undefeated heavyweight prospect David Tsua flattened fellow prospect John Ruiz just 19 seconds into the opening round. Number 32. On November 28, 1980, WBC light heavyweight champion Matthew Saad Muhammad went up against the undefeated challenger Lati Mulali. Muhammad brought things to an end in round four when he landed an obscene right hand quickly followed by a crippling left uppercut. The mouthpiece went flying, Mulali toppled over to the canvas, and the fight was over. 
Number 31. On April 4th, 1990, former heavyweight champion Michael Doak squared off against Donovan Razor Ruddick. In round four, Razor landed a mean left hook, a grazing right, and another pair of jolting left hooks that sent Dokes crumbling down. The fight was over in a splendid display of power. Number 30. On November 5, 1994, unified WBA IBF heavyweight champion Michael Moore put his titles on the line against former heavyweight champion George Foreman. Trailing on the scorecards late in the fight, Big George made boxing history in round 10. Foreman hammered Moore with a right hand that would make boxing history. Moore was down and he was counted out. At 45 years old, Big George Foreman had become the oldest boxer in history to win the World Heavyweight Championship, making him a two-time champion in the process, more than 20 years after he first held the crown. Number 29. On January 15, 1990, former World Heavyweight Champion George Foreman battled it out in a scheduled 10-rounder against former title challenger Jerry Cooney. Foreman dropped Cooney in round two, and moments later, Foreman had him down again with a legendary left uppercut followed by a sledgehammer right. The fight was over. Number 28. On March 20th, 1982, WBC flyweight champion Antonio Alivar put his title on the line against Prudencio Cardona. A furious opening round assault from Cardona chopped Alivar down in devastating fashion for a highlight reel first round knockout. Number 27. On November 17, 2001, unified IBF WBC heavyweight champion Haseem Rockman had an immediate rematch against the man he beat to become champion, Lennox Lewis. The former champion avenged his shocking loss with an incredible knockout victory when he clobbered Rockman in round four to regain the world heavyweight championship. Number 26. On April 29, 1995, IBF junior middleweight champion Vincent Petway squared off against former welterweight champion Simon Brown. In round six, Petway blasted Brown with a counter left that sent him down and out. Number 25. On July 18, 1987, WBA junior middleweight champion Mike McCallum put his title on the line against former welterweight champion Donald Curry. In round five, McCallum unloaded with a cracking left hook that sent Curry down. The fight was over and McCallum retained his title. Number 24. On April 16, 1952, world middleweight champion Sugar Ray Robinson defended his crown against former middleweight champion Rocky Graziano. Early in round three, Robinson fired off a sequence of speedy punches, and Graziano clipped him with a right hand that had Ray down. Later in the round, Sugar Ray blasted Rocky with a savage combination that clobbered him. Graziano was down, and he did not beat the count. It was a third-round knockout for Sugar Ray Robinson. Number 23. On July 30th, 1988, WBA junior middleweight champion Julian Jackson went up against former junior middleweight champion Buster Drayton. In round three, the Hawk bombarded Drayton with an obscene left hook that sent him crashing down like a felled tree. This one was over. Number 22. On June 22, 1938, world heavyweight champion Joe Lewis put his championship on the line against the only man who had previously beaten him, former heavyweight champion Max Schmeling. Cool as an assassin, Joe Lewis made quick work of his former conqueror, dropping him three times before the fight was stopped just over two minutes into the opening round. Number 21. On May 24, 1968, world light heavyweight champion Dick Tiger squared off against challenger Bob Foster. In round four, Foster threw a quick combination that included a nasty left hook, and down went Tiger, who would not beat the count. 
Bob Foster had just become the new World Light Heavyweight Champion. Number 20. On April 25, 1998, WBC Light Heavyweight Champion Roy Jones Jr. went up against former two-time Light Heavyweight Champion Virgil Hill. This was a non-title bout scheduled for 12. In round four, Roy landed a crippling right downstairs that sent Hill crumpling down to the canvas. The fight was over, and this was the first time Hill had ever been stopped inside the distance. Number 19. On June 20th, 1960, World Heavyweight Champion Ingemar Johansson had an immediate rematch against a man he beat to become champion, Floyd Patterson. Patterson dropped Ingo in round 5, and near the end of that round, Patterson dropped him again with a picture-perfect left hook that ended the fight. Patterson became the first boxer in history to regain the heavyweight crown. Number 18. On June 27, 1988, undisputed WBA, WBC, IBF heavyweight champion Iron Mike Tyson went up against lineal heavyweight world champion Michael Spinks in a battle for undisputed heavyweight supremacy between two undefeated champions. Before long, an uppercut followed by a crippling body shot sent Spinks down. He beat the count, but Tyson jumped on him immediately, and a thunderous right hand had Spinks down again. This time, Spinks would not beat the count. It was a sensational first-round knockout victory for Iron Mike Tyson. Number 17. On July 26, 1986, undefeated heavyweight contender Mike Tyson had a scheduled 10-round contest against Marvis Frazier, but this one would not be going 10. Right out of the gate, Tyson unleashed a furious assault with some vicious uppercuts that sent Frazier down and out. The fight was over. Number 16. On March 25, 1989, undefeated IBF middleweight champion Michael Nunn went up against former middleweight champion Sumbu Kalambe, who had recently been stripped of the WBA, preventing this from being a unification bout. Second to Nunn ended matters in the opening round, compliments of a dynamite slingshot left hand. Number 15. On February 11th, 1990, World Heavyweight Champion Iron Mike Tyson put his undisputed crown on the line against James Buster Douglas. Despite dominating most of the early action, Douglas was nearly knocked out by a Tyson uppercut in round 8, but Douglas persevered and re-seized command of the action. Douglas landed a booming uppercut in round 10 with a furious follow-up. Tyson was down, and he looked badly dazed and confused as he was grabbing around for his mouthpiece. Mike slowly rose to his feet, but by then he had been counted out. It was a 10th round knockout for Tokyo Buster Douglas in what to this day is still the greatest upset in boxing history. Number 14. On December 6, 1985, undefeated WBA IBF welterweight champion Donald Curry squared off against undefeated WBC welterweight champion Milton McCrory. This battle for undisputed welterweight supremacy didn't last long. A smashing left hook from Curry dropped McCrory in round two. He got up, and moments later a smashing right hand from Curry finished the job. The Lone Star Cobra had just become the undisputed world welterweight champion. Number 13. On November 22, 1986, WBC heavyweight champion Trevor Burbick squared off against undefeated contender Iron Mike Tyson. After being dropped by a combination in round two, Burbick beat the count and moments later, Tyson dropped him again with a short combination. Burbick rose too quickly and he stumbled down again twice more during the course of the same knockdown. When Burbick finally gathered himself to his feet, the ref had seen enough and Tyson became the youngest heavyweight to win a major world title. Number 12. On October 18, 1991, undefeated heavyweight contenders Tommy Morrison and Merciless Ray Mercer battled it out for Mercer's minor WBO belt. 
Morrison started the fight off strong and he looked good early, but in round five, Mercer unloaded with one of the most fierce and vicious knockout combinations ever captured on film. Mercer lived up to his merciless moniker as he launched one big bomb after another with staggering precision. Number 11. On March 31st, 1980, undefeated WBA heavyweight champion John Tate went up against challenger Mike Weaver. Behind in the fight going into the 15th and final round, Weaver landed a zinger of a left hook right on the button. Big John Tate was down and he would not be beating the count, making Weaver the new WBA champion. Number 10. On May 15, 2004, unified WBA, WBC light heavyweight champion Roy Jones Jr. had an immediate rematch against Antonio Tarver. Roy won a close majority decision the first time around, but this time around, in round two, Tarver landed a perfect left hand that flattened Roy. The fight was over, and the Magic Man had just won the unified light heavyweight crown in dramatic fashion. Number 9. On March 31st, 1980, undefeated WBC welterweight champion Sugar Ray Leonard squared off against challenger Dave Boy Green. In round 4, Leonard unloaded with a quick right-left, immediately followed by another quick right hand and left hook, and Green went down hard. Green would not be beating the count, and Sugar Ray Leonard was the winner by 4th round knockout. Number 8. On May 2nd, 2009, lineal junior welterweight champion Ricky Hatton squared off against former five-division world champion Manny Pac-Man Pacquiao. Pacquiao dropped Hatton twice in the opening round, where a badly shaken Hatton managed to survive the round. As round two was coming near an end, Pacquiao launched a devastating left that connected on Hatton's chin right on the button. The fight was over. Number 7. On November 20th, 2010, WBC middleweight champion Sergio Martinez had a rematch against his former conqueror, Paul Williams. In round 2, when both boxers were simultaneously looking to land the left, Sergio's found the mark first and Williams crashed down to the canvas. It was a spectacular second round knockout for Sergio Martinez. Number 6. On July 18, 1951, world heavyweight champion Ezra Charles squared off against a man he had already beaten twice, Jersey Joe Walcott. Amazingly, this was the fifth chance at a title fight for Jersey Joe, and in this case, the fifth time's a charm. In round 7, Jersey Joe Walcott hammered the Cincinnati Cobra with an obscene left hook that ended the fight. Jersey Joe had become the oldest man to ever win the World Heavyweight Championship at that time. Number 5. On September 23, 1952, world heavyweight champion Jersey Joe Walcott went up against undefeated heavyweight contender Rocky Marciano. In round 13, Walcott was looking to set a trap for a big right hand, and at that exact moment, Marciano drilled Walcott with a sledgehammer right of his own. Walcott was down, and he would not be beating the count. It was a 13th round knockout, and Rocky Marciano had just become the new world heavyweight champion. Number 4 on December 8, 2012, the fourth and final encounter between Manny Pac-Man Pacquiao and Juan Manuel Marquez. Officially, Pacquiao had two wins and a draw against Marquez to this point. This was a wild one that saw both fighters hit the canvas. As round six was drawing towards an end, Pacquiao began getting aggressive, and Marquez walked him directly into a smashing right hand. Pacquiao was down, and he would not be beating the count. The fight was over. Number 3. On May 1st, 1957, world middleweight champion Gene Fulmer put his championship on the line against the man he beat to win the championship, Sugar Ray Robinson. In round 5, Robinson found the mark with a sensational left hook that sent Fulmer crashing down to the canvas, and he was counted out. 
The great Sugar Ray Robinson had just reclaimed the world middleweight championship, making him a four-time middleweight champion in the process. Number 2. On November 24th, 1990, former junior middleweight champion Julian Jackson squared off against Harold Graham for the vacant WBC middleweight title. Graham was in complete control of the action through three, and this trend continued into round four until it happened. Jackson landed a beautiful counter right hand that had Graham out cold before he crashed down hard. Oof, maron. The fight was over, and the Hawk had just become a two-time champion. And finally, number one. On June 15th, 1984, WBC junior middleweight champion Thomas the Hitman Hearns went up against former three-division champion Roberto Duran. Hearns dropped Duran twice in the opening round, and Duran was badly shaken, but he survived the round. In round two, Hearns launched a nuclear right that detonated right on Duran's chin. Roberto fell face down onto the canvas, and he would not be beating the count. The fight was over, and it was an absolutely spectacular knockout victory for Tommy the Hitman Hearns. Simply spectacular. And that's it. Once again, I'd like to give a very special thanks to the 25 volunteers who participated in this survey. Without them, this video would have never been possible. So these are the real heroes behind this countdown video. Also, a special thanks to the YouTube channel Smooth Legends. Smooth Legends does an absolutely awesome job restoring old fight footage. So if you aren't familiar with the channel, you should definitely check it out. Smooth Legends. Thank you very much for watching, everyone. I hope you enjoyed, and have a wonderful night. This is Rummy's Corner.